Hello and welcome to ISBNM organized seminar series Adaptive Open Succeed the Yes That's the Theme. Today, this evening, we have the theme of mutual funds, Kovadis. Kovadis is a Latin term meaning where are you marching? Well, we would like to ask from our audience questions regarding this seminar once our guest uh, is here. Yes, and here we have Kumar Utsav Singh, our alumni. Yes, alumni of ISBN and Kolkata. He has passed out in 2011. He is currently the channel head retail sales of Hyderabad of ICICI Pro AMC. Welcome Utsav, welcome to the platform. Thank you, you so much. Ask? Yes. And uh, we have with us, of course, our audience, we know that. And Brita, Professor Brita Singh from ISBNM Kolkata, a faculty, and who has been training on corporate communications for a long time now. Welcome, everybody. So, um, Utsav, once again, happy to see you here. Uh, it's always great to see alumni who are successful in life. So, um, since let's get back straight to our topic, that is, what about the mutual fund? Where are we going? So before we go to that, let's take a step back and try to understand what are the different avenues of investments in today's scenario. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for welcoming me on this platform. I really enjoy coming back to my institute and you know participating in different events. Uh, this is one of that foremost moment for me because uh, whatever I am right now today, uh, ISBNM has been an integral part to that. And uh, then coming back to the topic, yes, uh, mutual funds are something which is quite interesting in the current scenario because, uh, you know, as of today, uh, people were following a very traditional mode of investments, which uh, was uh, correct at for a certain period of time. But then with time, things change. And uh, one uh, need to adapt that change. So mutual fund at this point of time is something I would rather say is a tool which will help you to plan your future as well as your present. And uh, the different avenues that we are talking about here uh, earlier uh, that even the traditional or the conventional method that we say are uh, basically fixed deposits, PPF schemes, uh, buying uh, physical gold jewelries, uh, investing in bonds, stock markets, so these are the certain avenues that people were investing their money in. Then uh, during the 1963 period, UBI came up with this concept called mutual fund. And with that progress, it moved into a different stage from 2003 where private entities started participating in the mutual fund space. And ICICI being one of the prominent organization as of today. So as we are talking, there are 45 mutual fund companies in the country. And uh, with the asset size of 24 and a half lakh crore, the entire industry is functioning. Uh, out of that, uh, ICICI has close to three and a half lakh crores of assets and uh, is one of the top three players in the industry. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an important uh, gist that, you know, uh, as of today, there are close to 40 crore span holders and only two crores investors are there in mutual funds. So that is close to around, you know, 2% of the total population. So there is a lot of potential to grow. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. There are a lot of potential to grow for people and a lot of money to be made if people have that kind of time and patience. So what are the different types of mutual fund? So at this point of time, if I tell you, uh, there are different types of mutual fund depending upon the risk appetite of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can bifurcate it into three major categories. One would be equities. The other would be fixed income space. And the third would be money market space. There is an additional space called hybrid, which is a mix of debt and equity in a different component. So people are moving major of their monies toward that space as well, because they want to have a flavor of both. Mm -hmm. so, so, as uh, of, hmm. so what are the, can you talk a little bit about like, uh, what the features of these? So sure, sure. I'll do that. So, uh, if I talk about mutual funds, uh, we need to understand that, uh, uh, it's basically investing is an age old, never ending emotional battle between fear of the future and faith in the future. So in order to do so, I, we need to be very cautious to understand that mutual funds are not something where you get a tip and you invest and you take your money out. It is not of a stock market. It's a little different. 
So what we need to understand here is uh, a lot of discipline, a lot of patience, and a lot of research is required uh, to uh, invest your time and money into mutual funds. Uh, if I buy, if I segregate the concepts of uh, mutual funds, so starting with equities, they are divided into three spaces: uh, large caps, which are uh, which are having a market cap of uh, twenty thousand crores. Uh, mm -hmm. Those are the stocks which would be the part of the portfolio. Then comes the mid cap space, which is having close to five thousand crores to twenty thousand crores of market cap stocks in their portfolio. Then comes the small cap, which is around uh, below five thousand crores of portfolio in the stock market. Now, if I select the stock portfolio in total, so there are, let's just say if I take top uh, 250 stocks, the 100 stocks at the top are part of the large cap space. From 100 to 250, it is the mid cap space. And from 250 and below, it is the small cap space. So that is where the entire portfolio gets set up. And uh, mutual fund is basically a process, you know, where you uh, gather a pool of money from people, investors rather per se, and uh, they would uh, deploy that money into a fund house a fund house like a, for example if i talk about mutual fund company and fund houses have professionals called fund managers who manage the funds on behalf of the investors mm -hmm. they build returns for those investors and then pass on the proceeds to the clients that's how the system works now if i if you ask me as an investor why should i give my money to somebody else that's the basic question sir that somebody will ask so uh, there are two things to it first aspect is if you have the time and the inclination you should do it yourself and if you have the research to it you should be doing it yourself if the answer for both these aspects are yes you know what to do and if it is no somewhere in your heart you understand that i don't have the time neither i don't have the understanding to it which is fair enough for people to understand that mm -hmm. then give it to professionals who are managing they are getting paid to do that right so you would say that for a beginner it is better to trust a third party rather than trying to do them uh, invest themselves right so had it been a, a a company or an organization which was not regulated this could have been a question for all set of investors but mutual funds are regulated by sebi so there is a regulator involved so there is accountability which is available in the system so people who are participating through uh, mutual funds in the form mm -hmm. of uh, different formats of investment they can be rest assured that their money are in safe hands uh, most of the organizations which are functioning as of today are uh, prominent companies with uh, the right set of people in it and uh, if i am talking about 24 and a half lakh crores of asset that is being managed by the industry then you can understand that a lot of people are showing trust in this segment as well a lot of people sir think think of mutual funds as something that you go into and you make your money and you come out of it is that so or should it be for a longer period of time so uh, just to add to it ma'am uh, you know uh, i started my discussion with equities and i uh, shared the aspect to it there are two more aspects to that uh, one is a fixed income space where you invest in debt funds which are part of corporate bonds debentures and corporate papers then there are money market instruments so uh, to answer your question money market instruments are those instruments which invest in papers for uh, which is around 91 of days in terms of tenure or a little more so uh, to answer your question uh, uh, people who wants to put that kind of a money for let's just say for a contingency fund or let's just say they need the money after a month or after seven days they can park their money in money market space so those are the categories that they can move into so uh, as of today if i look at banks uh, banks are cash rich in terms of the uh, supply of money that the rbi has given them the authority to now they are not lending because they are not lending to people they don't want money from the market now since they are not wanting money from the market they are not giving attractive interest rates to the clients so the saving rate has come down to up to 3% in a in a sbi bank which is one of the largest bank of the country and in a money market fund in a mutual fund space you can get almost 7% kind of a return to park the same amount of money for the same tenure so if i if i am a layman and if i understand that if i am parking my money in a in a bank savings account with liquidity intact i get 3% for the entire 365 days and if i am parking the same money in a mutual fund which is not carrying any exit load exit load is a period for before which if you withdraw you get charged so there is no exit load in money market funds so if you are parking that money for that period of time you earn around 7% of interest in that so which is almost double so one needs to understand that where can i make money two things that investors don't tend to understand uh, or uh, rather give it a miss is uh, they don't consider the 
income factor. So if I'm earning something, it's mostly the gross income. The real income comes after deduction of inflation and taxes. So today, if I'm earning 10 rupees, and if the inflation is around 5 rupees, I'm actually earning 5 rupees there. And if I fall into a bracket of 10%, so I would only be earning 4.5 rupees. So I need to understand in that 4.5 rupees, will I be rich? That's the question that somebody needs to answer. Well, about questions before investing in mutual fund, what, what are those questions that a person needs to ask before you know, putting in the money in mutual funds? Because you know that's uh, all that short, uh, very small uh, written word, you know, mutual funds are subject to risk. And you should think very well before the document period before signing, you know, that they always say very fast. So um, what are those questions that a person need to ask? So I think uh, people are aware, uh, aware of the concept of mutual funds in the form of a joke. So, you know, uh, mutual funds are subject to market risk. Please read the scheme of a document carefully before investing. That is the true line that is always there for the people to understand. Uh, Today, uh, if you see the ads of mutual funds, uh, you would see mutual funds sahi hai. So if you see the commercials, if you see the holdings, uh, those are the ads which are displaying as of now. So you can understand how the dynamics of investing has changed. People who thought mutual funds are risky because they were only looking towards equities, uh, that uh, I would say there is risk involved because uh, without risk, you won't be making money. Anything which gives you a, a confidence of I will make money may not give you that kind of a return if they are not taking risk. Mm -hmm. So risk adjusted return is something that people should look forward to rather than just returns. So there is a difference between the two. And uh, the concept of uh, investing needs to be understood from the investor's perspective as well. So as an advisor, if I'm an advisor to somebody, I don't to understand his risk profile. So if I have to term it in, as a layman term, let's just say somebody is 30 years old. So I need to make sure that he's investing 70%. So uh, out of 100 rupees, if he's investing and he's 30 years old, that's a basic layman. It works for me. It can work for others also. So somebody who's 30 years of age and investing 100 rupees, I'll ask him. I'll ask him to invest that 100 rupees, uh, uh, 70 rupees into equities and 30 rupees into debt. Right. Uh, right. Now uh, that would only be uh, sufficient to the point that he needs to understand his risk appetite. So if the concerned investor is conservative in nature, he should park more of his money into debt schemes or hybrid schemes. And if he is more uh, risk prone, he can take a little risk. Then he should definitely move into equities. So if I uh, break the risk uh, in terms of equity, uh, large caps are comparatively less riskier than mid and small caps. And mid cap is less riskier compared to small caps. So uh, people who are moving into a mutual funds equity scheme, they should need to understand that uh, if their risk appetite is very high, they should be into mid and small cap space. If the risk appetite is a little low, they can move into large cap space. Right. Uh, before I move on to the next question, I would request our audience that, yes, as always, our question forum is open and it's always right here and he is more than willing to answer any of your queries regarding investments. So please pour in the questions. Uh, so the next question for you is, um, what are closed-ended and open-ended funds? See, a few years back, uh, what we uh, started seeing from the industry was that uh, the uh, discipline factor was missing in mutual funds. So if I, as an investor, wanted to invest a certain amount of money into a bank, I would go to walk into a bank. I will ask my bank manager that what is the FD rate going on? And I will check the FD rates. If it suits me, I would put my money into a three-year, five-year FDs. And I would not look into that investment at all before that maturity happens. But in a mutual fund platform, uh, because the liquidity part was so easy, so high, that people who were investing with a thought process of three to five years, they were withdrawing their money at the whims of you know certain panics happening in the market or maybe any kind of a contingency that they hadn't planned. So what was happening is their goal was not being met. So what the industry decided was to give them an option to choose between open and closed-ended funds. So open-ended funds are basically funds, mutual funds, which are having an exit load or which may not have an exit load and people can come in and get out at any point of time. Uh, the exit loads are basically period before which if you withdraw, you pay a certain amount of fee as a fine before, uh, because of the uh, withdrawal. 
So in a closed ended fund, that option was not available. So if you had to invest in a closed ended fund, which could be in the form of FMPs, which could be in the form of capital protection schemes, or which could be in the form of equity closed ended funds, they have to complete their entire tenure before withdrawing the entire amount. I see. So that was that was just to make sure that they make the kind of return they were expecting, and even the fund houses get that opportunity to you know uh, use those funds in the right order to get them that returns. So for long term planning, I mean, you you keep your money locked for long term. Absolutely. To get assured, Absolutely, ma'am. Assured returns. So, uh, 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 Ryder, from this question is, what are then systematic investment plans and systematic withdrawal plans? Are they um, how are they placed? So, so uh, if we if we, if we talk about uh, in um, the modes of investment, uh, mm -hmm. one of those investment would be systematic investment plan, which we commonly known as uh, SIPs. SIPs. Right. So uh, these are basically uh, a pocket friendly way of investing. So people are they who, closed ended? Uh, not necessarily. They are not closed ended. They are open ended ways of investing. These are not funds. These are methods of investing. Mm -hmm. So there is a lump sum method where you park in a lump sum amount of money at one right. go. And then there is a systematic method. We park a monthly amount every month in your right. portfolio. Mm -hmm. So uh, the advantages of going through SIPs are basically it won't pinch the pocket so much if you don't have the money at every point of time. And uh, you can do a rupee cost averaging there because every month, every time, every day the market fluctuates. So you cannot time the market. So since you cannot time the market, if you keep on investing, there would be ups, there would be lows, there would be highs, there would be lows, and you would go for a rupee cost averaging method. Thirdly, it is a very disciplined approach because there is a specified date in which uh, the amount gets deducted from your bank account. So the, mm -hmm. process, the process goes like, uh, if you're investing via SIP and a mandate gets registered in your bank, and on that specified date, the bank will allot that money to the fund house and the, you will get units in return for that. So these are the methods of SIPs. So um, basically this is to, uh, as this was a shock absorber kind of, you know, and a forced investment, like it, it forces people to um, invest every month, like keep aside a, a part of the income. I, so Absolutely, ma'am. So I would rather not uh, term it as a forced method, but a disciplined approach because that would give them an idea, you know, that uh, I am spending a certain amount of money. It is They should consider it as an expense rather than an investment because the moment they consider it as an expense, they would not be remembering it. The moment I consider it as an investment, I will start tracking it. The moment I start tracking it, I would somehow be, you know, uh, into a mode where I ha I'll feel like withdrawing if a certain amount of money has been made, which is not the idea here. So let's just say if somebody is investing, I'll give you a very brief example. Mm -hmm. If somebody can invest 15,000 rupees uh, for 15 years at the rate of 15%, he can make one CR, he can make one crores of rupees. In oh, that that's, can, can you make that claim? Like, is it possible to make that claim? It is possible. It is possible. But you need to make sure that you, we remain invested. The market could fluctuate because see, in our hand, we can only control the time of investment and the amount we are investing. We do not control the rate. The rate could fluctuate. So uh, since we are in a period where we are seeing the COVID crisis, and this is considered one of the worst phases of the industry, this is the right time to enter the market because things are cheap. The valuations are cheap. Mm -hmm. so today, today in the morning, if you go out shopping and if you know that the shops are not opened and there is only one shop which is open, he can charge you any amount of money and you have to pay. But today, if you know uh, four shops are open and all are full of stocks, and when you go to one of them, the other says, yeah, come to me, I'll give you at a cheaper rate. So this is something like that. You know, today uh, the industry, the valuations are cheap. People can buy more. People can invest more. They are spending less because, uh, because of this COVID crisis, people are not going to vacations. People are not going to malls. They are not eating out. They are not shopping. So whatever the money, the money they're earning, they're keeping in their bank account, which is giving them an interest rate of three to 4%. So if I consider the inflation factor, they are hardly earning 1 to 2% in that. If you talk about earning potential, they could earn much more, right? Is Absolutely. That... Absolutely, ma'am. They can. And uh, as a corollary to SIP, I was also talking about the SWP, that is systematic right. withdrawal plan. So uh, one of our core faculties that I spoke to in the morning, 
he he termed it as you know uh, sips are for younger people and uh, swps are for older people but uh, i i would just uh, say that sips are for everybody whoever prefers to start their investment they can start via sip mode to understand how things are moving and a disciplined approach will give them a good amount of money in the long run swps are basically the amount of investments you have already done you uh, start withdrawing uh, on a regular basis so if i talk about icici we have uh, two unique concepts one is called freedom sip and one is called freedom swp mm-hmm. so um well, could i ask a question of course ma'am the professor ashish mitra you must remember him sir he has he wants to know what do you think of automatic swipe of all bank balances of corporates to liquid funds on friday evenings and swipe back on monday mornings what is happening is uh, see all the corporates who are parking their money they mostly park their money into current accounts now current account doesn't fetch any kind of an interest rate there so we need to understand that whatever you are parking you are getting the same money back without earning any kind of an interest if you do the same thing in a mutual fund mutual fund has a cut off period which will allow your uh, fund to get a certain amount of interest and so that is a very good thing uh, for corporates to decide and as I, i would like to add that you know institutional clients and hni have started doing the same thing with the in the mutual fund industry so uh, during the end of the month or during the end of the week they park their uh, corpuses which are lying in their savings or the current account and they move the money back into their accounts by monday so they get an nav of a sunday so the rate that they get the nav of is something that they earn on the uh, amount of money they have invested that is a unique idea to earn uh, you know interest on investments i see um when you were talking about uh, what's happening right now these are we uh, the very small amount of people who are who have invested in mutual funds we obviously think of you know the way forward so how do you see the way forward for the mutual fund uh, in india see uh, india is a very dynamic country so you do, you know uh, the people of india are like uh, they reach places where covid has also not reached so uh, you know uh, i i personally have met a lot of people where i have visited different countries and uh, they they prefer uh, that india is a country which is growing and uh, people here understand the concept of savings because uh, we are brought up in a system uh, in a culture where you understand that you stay in a joint family or a nuclear family Uh, but there are systems of savings children are staying with their parents then there are various goals which they have to fulfill which could be you know a part of short term goals long term goals child educations or retirement planning monthly incomes uh, and contingency funds so these are avenues that people need money for now they may not need that money right now they may need that money at a, after a certain period now they understand that uh, when they were investing around 10 years back bank fds and post offices were something which was pretty attractive they were delivering good rates and uh, that was one of the better option for the uh, investors to park their money in but as of today the bank fd if you if you go by the branded banks if i if you term it as their bank fd rates have uh, slided to around 5% so my in- inflation is going around 4 and a half percent and bank fd rates are 5% so even if you park your money for 2 to 3 years you earn only 0.5% which is not going to make you rich so they understand that if they park that entire money in a mutual fund depending upon the kind of appetite they have which could be a debt fund which could be a hybrid fund which could be an equity fund they would garner more than what they are garnering in an fd beating the inflation as well as the taxation so if in a 3 years phase if i invest in a debt fund with the indexation benefit the investor can earn up to 8 and a half to 9% on the lower side in an equity fund if they remain invested for a longer period they can earn around 10% plus in a hybrid fund they can earn around 10% plus and the liquidity factor is always there if you can withdraw your money you can do that so are you looking at that amount, that kind of growth and what are the plans uh, if i can be specific to your organization what are your plans to to you know uh, share that with the invest potential investors Yeah, we have been quite vocal uh, in in terms of reaching out to people. So as we said, why that do you think I, this? If I 
if I can just inter interrupt you here. So why do you think there's, is there a lack of awareness? Is that why the investors are uh, kind of jittery to invest in mutual funds? Uh, I think the idea of saving is a little different. Uh, it all depends upon our experiences. Our re return depends on the asset class that we choose to invest. So maybe my father, when he was investing, he was investing into a, you know, FD and RDs. And when I grew up and I studied and I started watching TV and I started seeing internet, the movement of digitalization, then I started, you know, acquiring more information across the country, across the globe. So if you go outside India, uh, you would see that mutual funds are quite prevalent there. We brought in after a lot of delay. People started understanding it after a lot of delay. Now, uh, the awareness concept has gone up. If you see today, SEBI, Amphi, all are participating in marketing the mutual fund ideas in the industry. You'd see holdings all around. You'd see Sachin Tendulkar, MS Boni doing ads for mutual funds. So you can understand how that has become quite important to us. And to add to it, we have investments of these cricketers as well. I have, I have two questions for you, Utsa. One is from Amresh Kumar Rai, who is an alumnus of ISBM Kolkata. He, I think he knows you and you know him because he says, Hi, Utsa, please suggest some SIP mid-cap funds. Would you uh, like to address that? I would like to address that, but uh, hi, Amresh, first of all. Uh, just to add to it, uh, See, first of all, you need to understand that for how long you want to invest, number one. And uh, don't go by the past returns because past returns are not sustainable, number one. Number two, uh, and don't, uh, I would rather suggest that go for uh, investments where you can understand uh, the areas where you, you can make returns. So uh, mid-caps, uh, I can recommend ICICI mid-cap fund. I can recommend uh, the other AMCs. So there are uh, HDFC, Kotak, and there are Axis. You can look into those as well. There are many more AMCs which I could take a name, but this is not the platform where I can, you know, take names of companies here. Uh, but I would rather suggest that do SIPs. Uh, for ICICI, I, I would suggest go for Freedom SIP, where you can invest for a certain period. So if I have to give you a gist, uh, you can invest for 8 years, 10 years, 12 years, or 15 years, whatever amount you're investing. For example, if investing 10,000 rupees for 15 years, after the 15th year, the entire money will shift to a safe scheme, which let's just say to a hybrid scheme, for example, balance advantage fund. And from that safe scheme, you can start withdrawing three times of your investment amount. So you have started by 10,000 rupees for 15 years. You kept on investing in the 16th year, the entire money shifts to a safe scheme. From that safe scheme, you can withdraw 30,000 rupees every month, which I'm sure can take care of certain expenses of yours. We have That's a it. question again from Professor Ashish Mitro, okay. who says the, the total capital gains received receipt of government of India is around 65,000 crores per year. Do you think the abolition of capital gains can boost the mutual fund market exponentially? Absolutely. I think uh, that would be an area that people would look forward to because alpha can only be created if you're moving away from the index. If your investments are towards the index, your returns would be almost similar to what the index is giving. So if any of the fund managers who are managing the mutual funds, they, uh, the, the work that they need to do is to beat benchmarks. So in order to do that, they have to deviate a little from the index. So whatever returns people are making as of today, because mutual fund, as per mutual fund rule, whatever capital gain uh, you have, so a long-term capital gain of one lakh is totally tax-free. And after that, uh, whatever you earn is taxable. So I think uh, that decision is quite pertinent and would be a boost to the mutual fund industry as well. Yes. Are there any more questions, Prita? No, not at the moment. No. All right. So um, let's talk about the future then. You know, you're talking about the fund managers and uh, also talking about a potential growth in the industry looking ahead. So that would mean that they would, you would need people, right? I mean, um, sure. So See, what are uh, the kind of, sorry? Yes, ma'am. Please continue. Yes. So I'm saying, what are the kind of skill sets that you require in these people? What is your expectation from uh, the new set of young people who join, new managers who join, 
what skill set do they need to have? Uh, uh, mutual fund industry is something which is, uh, I would rather term it as a, a, a job where knowledge base needs to be uh, regularly built up. So that skill set is something that is quite pertinent to this industry. And one needs to be aware of what is happening around the country, happening around the market and happening globally, as well as they need to understand the uh, psyche of the investors, because every investor could be a little different. So uh, if I have to give you an example, I met a client who's 70 years old and has uh, most of his activities already done. He has all his responsibilities are taken. He's investing uh, in equity funds. So people were started questioning that why a 70 year old guy is investing in an equity fund. So he says, why I need money? I need my money for the next generation. I can't take risk. Then at the other aspect of it is I met another guy who is working in, a, uh, in an organization who is in his uh, early 30s. And I asked him to go for an equity fund. He said, I would prefer to go for a debt fund. I asked him why. He said, see, I am a salaried guy. I And right now the situations are like this, that I may or may not you know, be employed. So uh, the idea is that mutual funds are something which should not be termed according to age. So you need to understand that the client base could be anybody and everybody with a population of 138 crores. That entire base is our client. And uh, with almost 40 crore span, we have only, as I said, 2% uh, of the total crowd as investors. We got a big area to work on. So we got big potential. And digitalization is something that the industry is working on. So earlier you had to walk to a branch and you know give a form, give a check, make your KYC and uh, do your investments. Today, sitting at home, you can do the same thing and without even uh, spending more than two to three minutes. So that is something that we have grown on. Uh, rural belt is something that is really picking up well because uh, they don't have that extravagant lifestyle in their, uh, uh, you know, in in their course of life. So they save more, and they prefer to opt for investments. So that is one area because uh, most of our uh, rural people and the city people are looking for avenues where they can earn risk adjusted returns. So uh, for an individual or for people who want to work in an AMC. I would rather suggest uh, keep reading, keep learning, understand the nuances of the market, uh, watch TED Talks, I would rather suggest, and uh, read the books written by Warren Buffet and uh, you know uh, uh, Benjamin Graham, Nick Murray, read those books, watch how the market is playing. If you are into stocks, buy stocks, look into stocks, take gradual calls, and uh, start investing first, then uh, I would rather say, because if you start investing, you would start looking into the gradual aspects of mutual funds. You would start looking into the areas. Um, the profiles that you were talking about were independent uh, people who would be working with, with the mutual fund, or are you talking about people from the industry itself, like uh, fund managers who would handle clients? No, I mean, uh, the fund managers handles the portfolio. They would need people to manage clients. So, right, so they would be employed by the organization. And we are looking at what kind of skill sets would a ideal fund manager have or effective fund manager have? The ideal skill set would be a great communication skill is something that people would need. Uh, the secondly, they would need the industry knowledge, which is uh, the ideas of different, uh, you know, aspects of investments, which is equity, debt, hybrid, money market. Then uh, what is going on in the industry, per se. Parallelly, they need to understand the psychic of what is financial planning, what is portfolio management. So these are the areas that they need to. I think one of the courses of ISBM is Capstone. That is something which is quite relevant for their, uh, you know, skill set development. So that is something they should work on. And uh, Professor Mitra is already there in the institute. He, he was even there during our times. I think he's one of the key faculties who could guide these students properly. How important is ethics, you know, and um, in in terms of advising about money market, advising about investment decisions? You know, a lot of times this is one issue where a lot of there's a question mark at people in. In the hurry to sell or in the hurry to achieve targets, uh, there are a lot of gray areas where the compliance issues are often fudged. What's your opinion or thought about that? That's a very interesting question, ma'am. Thank you so much. 
because uh, in the mutual fund industry, since it is regulated by SEBI, uh, these things are very strictly adhered by. So uh, compliance is something that people need to understand uh, because you would never hear somebody uh, say that uh, mutual funds have cheated me, you know, because the transparency is so much. Whatever you invest, it is reflected on the statement. The amount you withdraw, it is reflected on the statement. The industry does not deal in cash as of now. So you can understand that the system is regulated. You invest via internet banking, RTGSs or via checks. So that uh, regulates the investment process. Parallelly, Amfi SEBI is there to guide the uh, mutual fund industry in total to uh, take the right decisions. Compliance which is something which is seriously taken by the industry. And coming to ethics, I think that is something that people should be involved with. So that's how you move forward. That's how we build trust, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, share some of your work experience and uh, stories from your work life, which, uh, which you have encountered and which you have enhanced. Can I ask, can I ask a question before you get on to that itself? Of course. You know, you have been talking constantly that, you know, in the market, there are ups and downs. And obviously, when somebody who's working in the mutual fund segment, this is explained very clearly to the client. But yet, what happens is when there is a down in the market, the client sort of feels that, oh, my God, I've lost all that money. And if they when they meet the uh, relationship manager, that person actually doesn't face hostility, but they are sort of held responsible. You know, how has this happened to me? Because they seem to forget that they are not the only investor or, you know, in that whole uh, thing of mutual funds. How, how do you deal with that fear, that apprehension, sometimes hostility that a client comes up with? Because they have understood, but they have not accepted. I connect with the thought now. So uh, I would rather say that mutual working in a mutual fund is like you're working in a world's best profession because uh, you are not uh, doing your job because somebody is not well, unlike a doctor. You're not doing your job because somebody is going to a dispute. So you're not a lawyer. Uh, you're not doing your job because somebody is doing something incorrect. You're not a cop. So in a mutual fund industry, somebody has money. So you don't have to teach people how to earn money here. They already know that. So you need to make sure that the money is deployed in the right direction. Now what happens is while discussing the initial investments or the period of investment, they need to make them understand that mutual fund industry is like a roller coaster ride. So you have to take those exposures uh, considering the risk involved in it. So if the client has the appetite, then he should move into uh, the product line that he considers okay to be with. Okay to be with. Because if I am a, a, a 33 year old guy and I want to invest my money into equities, I need to understand that it will fluctuate. Because you know, uh, you cannot predict the short term. It's like, it's like the weather. If I ask you what would be the weather in the evening today, you won't be able to tell me. But if I ask you what would be the season, you might be able to tell me. So one needs to understand that they need to stay longer to understand the uh, period of investment and the money that they are willing to make. Great. Um, I think that's a that we have a question a from a professor Shobhan Nandi, mm -hmm. also from ISBM Kolkata, who wants okay. wants it explained. Is there any difference between fund managers and wealth managers? Uh, yes, there is a certain difference between it because uh, what happens is fund managers are managing the portfolio of the entire fund. So it, let's just say if ICICI is having a blue chip fund, uh, which is the top, which is uh, matching the index of the fund. So he would be uh, responsible for the management of that particular fund. But a wealth manager could be somebody who could be a manager for a particular set of client you know so i could be a client to mrs brita singh but if mrs brita singh is investing into a blue chip fund the fund manager the client the client brita singh is the client of the fund manager there because like her there are thousands and lakhs of investors which are part of that fund so that is one of the major critical difference between a wealth manager and a fund manager thank you great now 
Can we move on to your work experience and stories from there? Oh, uh, ma'am, uh, to be uh, really, uh, you know, uh, I have spent quite a lot of good memories with IC, uh, ICICI in my career as of now. Uh, I've worked in uh, different locations. So I started my career from uh, Delhi and then I moved on to Punjab and uh, I moved on to Calcutta and now to Hyderabad. So uh, that had been quite a roller coaster journey for me as well. So I've met. And India experience. Absolutely, ma'am. Absolutely. And it's great. It's actually great because you meet different kind of people, different cultures and you're brought in your horizon. So that actually works. And a uh, few of the examples that I would like to share is today if I ask my friends that uh, who is the guy who you will go to when you talk about money, you know, I get the majority of the votes. So, <laughs> so I would rather say uh, that this profession has taught me uh, how to deal with money and uh, how to uh, be a little patient with money because uh, there are no quick money uh, which is legal that you can make so you need a lot of patience in this uh, process of money making financial planning then uh, i think conflict management is something that i have learned as vita ma'am rightly pointed out that sometimes people expectations are not met uh, in in the form of investment so while working in different cities i have seen that as well and I have nurtured myself in that direction that people are emotionally involved when they talk about money. So you need to be emotionally available to people to take care of that aspect. Our time management is something that the mutual fund industry has taught me because there is a cutoff period. And if you are not within that time frame, then uh, the, uh, your investment goes for the next working day. So that needs to be understood. Uh, adaptability, as I said, that uh, since uh, I've worked in different locations, the market dynamics keeps on changing. There are things which are coming in. There are things which are going out. So you have to be adaptable to sustain. So mutual fund industry is something like that because every uh, two to three months, you'll find a new update coming in from SEBI uh, guiding in terms of regulations. So we have to abide by that as a fund house and we have to do the necessary changes. Constant adaptability, and you talk the way you talked about, you know, you becoming your uh, your friend's number one trusted man in terms of uh, looking for advice. But that uh, we believe at ISBNM Kolkata, you have had that reputation because you were a member of the Pact Cell, if you remember correctly, and uh, you were one of the prime organizers who got a lot of very prestigious companies to the college. If you could talk about your ISBNM Kolkata days and the campus life and your Paxel work and share with our audience. It's very heartening to hear something like that from the faculty. It's really heartening for me. Thank you so much. But uh, just to add to that, ma'am, uh, I would rather say that ISBM has taught me quite a lot number of things. First of all, it has taught me how to be accountable. You know, when you're given a set of responsibility, you have to be accountable. And luckily, I was uh, bestowed with a lot of mentors in the form of faculties uh, in ISBM. So, uh, you know, uh, while uh, studying, when you're working, you get to have a different feel. You're like way ahead of rest of the crowd. So when I started working with ICICI, after, uh, you know, passing out from ISBNM, I thought I was way ahead than rest of the crowd there. Because in my two years of management program experience, I had learned how to manage, uh, you know, uh, how to manage a team because of the uh, pack cell uh, coordinators position that I had got. At the same time, we were all working in proper coordination to make sure that we achieved the common goal. So in my batch, there were almost close to uh, 70 students. And in the senior batch, there were 150 students that we had to place. Now, imagining that Dr. Pramod Kumar, who is the founding member of ISBNM, giving us the responsibility to place the seniors. So imagine the dilemma that we were in being a junior, you have to place the seniors and that 250 odd people. So that was something that, you know, uh, brought us the professionalism in us. That was something which gave us the idea that you could do anything if you set your mind to it. And uh, a lot of help was given uh, by the faculties and the staff members of ISBNM. I think ISBNM has become a synonym to anybody who can understand, uh, you know, self-dependence. So when, when you start working and doing things on your own and you get that uh, freedom to, you know, do things 
and you work it out in the right way it channelizes the energy moves it channelizes and uh, yes uh, we brought in a lot of companies in our uh, period deloitte being one of them then we had bajaj electricals then we had havels lg keeps on coming icici was also part of it so uh, i think uh, a major financial companies were there deloitte so today i am in hyderabad and uh, i met the guy who who represented deloitte uh, you know uh, when he came to visit our campus and he still remembers us he says that your campus was something that i really remember because they had they had to go through a very lengthy process during the selection so they needed systems which isbm could provide and we had to invite three other institutes uh, you know uh, to continue the entire process and the other institutes were quite happy with the kind of setup that we had the kind of infrastructure we had and the support system that we had so uh, deloitte came in uh, back to back two years just because of the kind of students we had the kind of infrastructure we had and the kind of learnings people had so i would rather suggest that uh, people should spend time and move into uh, you know uh, management courses with isbnm they'll have a different set of learning because if because and another advantage that i see here is you're bringing in alumni to talk to them so they can understand that where are the people placed so that is something that people should clearly understand and uh, i wish all them all of them uh, all the best and uh, you know the parties i forgot about the parties i'm really sorry i forgot about the parties that is something uh, before you go to the parties let me uh, it's our turn turn to be um, to feel heartening uh, it's really heartening to hear that isbnm does not only teach uh, the academics part they also make Uh, there's the students industry ready with hands on training and skills Absolutely. and it's really important that what you said you know when a company like deloitte came and said that the quality of students that we uh, that graduate each and every year are it meet their expectations that's why they came back which is a which is which speaks for itself right and also this uh, something that you said that a lot of other alumni alumnus have talked about in this very platform is the the when they go to work they find that they are in terms of working ethics and professionalism they are way ahead than other people of the same batch which i find is a recurring theme that a lot of the students have been talking about which is again very good to hear would you agree brita absolutely absolutely yeah yeah totally totally we do that because i completely understand that when we talk about ourselves among the alumni we understand that what isbn has given us so they have given us the feeling of entrepreneurship you know you need to own what you do and if you're owning it uh, you you take the entire responsibility on your head so uh, that is something that isbm teaches us uh, strategic thinking is the other aspect that isbm teaches us and uh, parallelly uh, as i earlier said conflict management time management adaptability communication i think effective communication uh, brita ma'am had been uh, quite uh, you know pertinent and it, she has been a, a founding pillar of the batch students that uh, that had Thank gone you. by so i think this is the, some of the aspect that people should connect with isbn it's a brand it's a brand people should understand Utsav, that you can thank you so much utsav Talk you mentioned people. yes sorry utsav you mentioned parties mm. and yes. if you remember you often had classes which were very very late Now, why do you think guys were put you through that? Even the parties Absolutely. were not lunches ever; they were late. What did that? What did that teach you? I think, ma'am, uh, to be really honest, uh, good you touched that part because I actually missed that part to add that you know uh, uh, the classes and the parties and the sessions that we used to have. There was no time foundation to it, so people uh, had to adapt to different timelines to work. so that was something that uh, students learned at a very early stage that in isbnm there is nothing called a certain time frame that you do a certain thing so if i had to do a go for a party i can go for a party and maybe after the party i have to attend the session of dr kumar so that was there that was always there and people had to be alert people had to be on their toes to understand that that is something important even the classes i think our classes were something which was very flexible for people like us we could not attend a lot of classes on a regular basis but my faculties um, the teaching staff they were very helpful and they were very thoughtful of you know extending that classes 
even on weekends you used to have classes and sessions so there was nothing called weekends for us in isbnm so, but that is something which adds to your professional capacity because when you actually go to the actual world you understand that in an organization you have to meet deadlines and in order to meet deadlines you have to work odd hours and that is what you have already been taught in those 700 plus days at isbnm that's wonderful wonderful and uh, if you could um, pick out one learning that you have taken from isbnm kolkata what would be it um, one Any learning story that stands out from your friends from the parties that you have that you were so volubly uh, excited about oh uh, at this point of time ma'am i would rather suggest that isbnm has given me a lot of friends and uh, few of their friends have become so successful in life that uh, you they, they become an inspiration to you so isbn have given me that and uh, i have friends in bangalore hyderabad calcutta delhi bombay so uh, even even in cities like patna even in cities like you know bihar and other spaces because what has happened is we have and abroad i believe abroad as well absolutely so we got friends abroad as well uh, one of those uh, i think one of them was uh, my classmate as well so he's there so what we have learned is that with dreams with the right set of mindset and skill set you could achieve wonders and uh, start you can start from scratch but you can reach the stars so that is something that's that they, that's something that they have taught us and i'm i would rather always be pleased to be associated with isbn thank you utsav that was wonderful talking to you and the last bit that you said you know you can start from scratch you may not be rich to begin with initially but then nothing stops you from dreaming big and achieving so my that. my my last last take would be that you may not come from a rich family but a rich family should come from you so my how do you do that that is what the entire session on mutual fund was <laughs> <laughs> we'll connect more i think uh, this is an area that people should work uh, and learn and uh, they should always remain connected i think networking is something that helps them to bind and uh, i think ma'am uh, there are areas that people can put their money in and they need to give it time for it to grow be it about time be it about experience be it about patience be it about dream give it some time give it some thought and Absolutely. then it will soar right yes. so thank you for having uh, the session with us utsav or to you breetha to conclude the session for us thank you so much thank you utsav thank you for being with us i have very very strong memories of you as a college student and especially of your activities as the pack member and coordinator thank you so i'm so that that isbm has played a part in helping you to achieve your dreams and may every one of your dreams be fulfilled in the future we really do wish you the very best thank you thank so you much. abhi rupa thank you so much and with that we will end the session thank you so much thank you and bye bye bye